There's always more than one way to do something. There are about as many ways to load a motorcycle as there are different kinds of motorcycles that there are to ride. Um, everyone has their own preference and their own style. Um, people have different takes on what should and shouldn't be done. And uh, some of them are really good and some of them are just bad. Uh, so we're going to talk about what makes the difference between a good method and a bad method and cover some of the basic principles about it. Hopefully this video will be a lot of fun. You should be able to get a lot of laughs out of it and uh, should be a good time. As with anything else, money can make anything much easier. If you have the money to invest in a fancy system or a big, huge, wide ramp, it can be really, really easy and someone does the thinking for you. Using a trailer is always a great idea, especially if it's built for hauling motorcycles like this uh, triple trailer. Um, the downside to this is it's not as secure as something that's more enclosed. This is what I use currently quite a bit. This way if anything comes undone or untied, it doesn't fall off the trailer. You can mount three bikes just like in the other one. You just turn the middle one backwards. Uh, but it's a little expensive and it's hard to drive. The most popular way of loading a motorcycle is the least expensive and that's a narrow ramp method. But there's three inherent dangers to this. Uh, there is the security of the ramp staying in place, uh, the balance, and also traction. And so we'll cover each of these. Security is the easiest and most overlooked. All you have to do is strap the ramp to the truck. Now, of course, you have to balance to ride a motorcycle. Everybody knows that. That's not too hard. The hard part is when you get your center of mass between the system of you and the bike. When the bike weighs more and it gets up above you, it can tip over. The easiest way to solve this is to either add another ramp, which I like to do with really good grip, or just put a box or a bike stand or something you can use as stairs to get up into the truck, and then that's not a problem. When you choose to ride a motorcycle up into something, you're at the mercy of your own skills and confidence, as you can see here. See, this guy's got all the skills and confidence he needs. This guy just got lucky. Look at this ramp drag up into the bed. This next guy, he knows he's going down. He turns and says, what? As you can see, I'm a little scared. He's scared. He's not confident. But furthermore, look at the way he's got these ramps set up. They're together so that the slick part is what he's riding on instead of the grippy part. Nothing is secured to the truck or strap. He bottoms out, he has no out plan, and balance just fails when you're not moving. That's just the way it is. That's what I didn't want to happen. He was focusing on what he didn't want. See how those ramps split apart to be That's the other thing is they could have done that. He could have fallen through the middle of them. I'm okay. We're glad you're okay. okay. And you posted this. You're awesome for doing that. Remember we talked about traction, I just mentioned it with him with his ramps as he went up the slick part instead of the traction part. If you run out of grip on that ramp, your control of the bike is gone. This is a great example of that. Loading a bike wrong can be dangerous to you, but it can also be dangerous to your truck. Watch him hit the front of this bed and crush it. Bam! Out he goes. When offloading a bike, it's just as important to have something to walk on or some means of uh, supporting yourself. So he's doing a smart way. He's not trying to ride the bike off the truck, but without anything to step on, watch what happens to the bike. There's no way to hold that up way above your head. This guy's got his stuff together. He's using the bike's power. He's got a grippy ramp. You see a strap so that he's got it secured, but what does he have to stand on? Well, you don't see it in frame, but look, he's made himself some stairs. And so he's got good balance. He can stop at any moment. This is the proper way to load a bike. Just step up into the truck, have your straps ready to go. Beautiful, perfect. This one is not for the squeamish. Not only is there an animal in the way that can throw you off or nerve you, he's got no ramp. I mean, just everything went just right to be wrong. I think he had confidence. Maybe he had that going. This poor guy, he's been riding all day. He's tired. People have been talking trash. And he's just trying to get home from the track. Now, he's got a lot going for him that's right. You know, he's got a good grippy ramp. That's actually a ramp I really like, that aluminum one. It's got the extruded uh, grips in each rung. But the problem, he's got the step. I mean, but you got to get that uh, ramp strapped to the bed and turn the bike on. If you have it running, it can push and actually help pull you up into the bed and help you make that transition step. Uh, 
he's going to get it up in there eventually, but he's just working way too hard. I mean, if you're pushing the weight of the bike, I mean, you don't push the bike around the motocross track. Why should you push it up into your truck? It just doesn't make any sense. But at least he's not trying to ride it up in there and then stalling out and falling over. I mean, this could be a lot worse. So at least he's got some control of the situation to where he can manage it a little bit better on the fly. So here he goes. He actually almost makes it. And then instead of giving up, he holds on the brake. He takes a rest. See the brakes yeah! on? He steps in and he's got victory. What a beast. Oh, is he proud God, of his victory? Yeah. Let's, let's see that face of a champion. He's ashamed. Let's see the Don't face of a champion. Don't let this be you. Learn from this video and load your bike safely and like a champ. You gotta give this guy a lot of points for heart, but he just doesn't have a clue. The bike's not running, oh! he doesn't have a step, and he doesn't have a good plan. You know, if he did get it up on the ramp, it'd just fall on him. I think he kind of caught on to that by instinct at the last second and just kind of came off the ramp. Dude. And the girls are laughing at him. Don't let that be you. I think that orange strap, he actually had that thing tied on there, but there's no point if the uh, if that back wheel's not driving it up on there. Go. Look at this guy. Yes. This guy's got the face of a winner. This woman's laughing at him, and he looks like he hasn't done this very often. This may be his first time, but he spent a lot of money on the bike, but he also saved enough money to get a good ramp. He's got a nice wide ramp. He has a ramp tied to the uh, receiver on the truck. So it's not going to come off. He's got the bike running. He's got good footwear. I mean, it could be in the rain and he would still have the same success. Look at this. At any point, he can stop and control it. So he's not panicking on the clutch. He's not panicking on the gas. He doesn't smash the front of his nice truck or bust the window. What a champ. I watched an episode with Jay Leno. He's building that jet car. And he says, as the president of the More Money Than Brains Club, you know, he's going to go ahead and build a jet car. Well, if you have a lot of money and you don't want to figure it out and you just want to be safe, look at all the devices that there are to do it safely. I mean, these systems, you can get them anywhere from like 800 bucks if you build it yourself or all the way up to three, four, five grand. But look how slick this is. This is just an awesome, awesome system. That bike's not going to fall over. It's not going anywhere. You're not going to hurt yourself. But it is a lot of hardware to leave in the bed of your truck. So if you don't have a lot of money, if you don't want to leave a bunch of accoutrements attached to the bed of your truck, there are options for you. Now somebody's going to say in the comment, I don't need another ramp or steps. Well, maybe you're seven feet tall and maybe you're right. <laughs> People be all like, I don't need a ramp. I can just still ride it in. Look at this guy. That's fake. Like I say, if you've got the skill and you've got the confidence, totally you can ride it up no problem like I probably should have had a ramp on there but with the momentum he had he didn't really need it so we've established there's no strap tying the ramp on that I can see. He hasn't done it before. He's scared. He doesn't have a confidence. So guess what's going to happen? Bam. He runs into something unexpected with the exhaust. Feet weren't even on the foot pegs. Forget about balance. Oh, wait, what are you going to do? How are you going to load it? <laughs> I'll take it up. Pop a wheel. Use more ramp. Always, always lift with your legs. Look how straight my back is as I do this Jim Anderson method. So what I do is I lift with my legs, my back is straight, and I just set the square bottom of the frame on the tailgate. It's got a plastic protector. Now, this is a heavy bike. This isn't an MX bike that's real light. So you get up in there and you just pull it the rest of the way. You can squat three, 400 pounds. This is only like 100 instead of using just one skinny ramp with no step or not tying it on you have more control you'll notice that i took a break halfway the bottom of that bike is actually kind of square and so it kind of holds itself up so i'm able to get up into the truck no problem without it falling on me that guy he is nervous and he, rightly so um, you know that's a heavy bike that's not a motocross bike that's just kind of a heavy trail bike 
it's not as much as a Harley in weight or a sport bike. Sport bikes are actually pretty light. I've done them not this way because they have the fairings, but you know, you can manhandle them is what I'm saying. So what I do, so I don't smash the front of the bed, sometimes people will successfully load it and then they'll do two straps to the handlebars and that's it. And they'll crush into the front of the uh, bed and push it against the cab. And then when you go off-roading, you rub, it chafes, you rust, it's just a mess. Best way is just put it right in the corner. You tie it off with one tie. To, you see how these ties are kind of ready to go? I should have prepared this better, but I was worried about camera stuff. Best way to do it is to tie the foot peg forward so it holds it in the corner and then do a tie down to each side. You can flip the truck upside down and it won't fall out. You can go down the dirt road, washboard road, whoops, whatever you want. Whoops are when you have a bunch of uh, bumps in succession. You can do all that and it just won't go anywhere. It's the best way to tie a bike down. It's the best for your bed and it's the best for just being secure. Now this method works great with just one bike. It even works great with two bikes. You just have them turning and facing away from each other and then tie the back wheels together in the middle of the tailgate. That works great. But if you're going to do uh, three bikes, you want to put a rack in there. And I would even advise if you're going to do two bikes to have some means of support so that you don't crush your tailgate for or your bed forward. Every time I go to the motocross track, I can't help but look. I see all these nice trucks and what do you see? You see that front part of the bed just smashed right up against the cab. I mean, it's a sin. It just, it sucks. Or you'll see the toolbox smashed in. My toolbox was actually smashed in by the previous owner of the truck. The box came with it when I bought it. So, how hard is that? Hoo-ha, yeah. The next best thing to not having a ramp at all, or even better than that, you spend just a little bit of money, you can get one of these carriers. You can get them for anywhere from 60 to 100 bucks. But my truck's so dang tall, the ramp was too short. There's my little motorcycle carrier backslash temporary bumper while I'm building my winch bumper. And uh, so I weld a bunch of X's on this, this is kind of thin tubing, and got it all reinforced so that it doesn't rattle. You know, just a little bit. And uh, it's got a ramp set up, and my truck's so dang tall, I had to do a little extension even after it was built. The ramp's pretty slick. The ramp fits on right here. It just drops in there. And uh, if this was up, it would drop in there. Anyway, so it hauls like that. And I'll show you how I load it. Let's do this. So this system's pretty awesome. It works great with my Y spike because it's so short. This little CRF 230, it just squats down with the suspension and then you can see pretty much my whole windshield. The only thing that I can't see as a driver is a small section of the road, the side of the road in the ditch on the right hand side where the handlebars are. And I can see that way down the road. I just can't see it for a split second as the pa handlebars pass it, you know, consecutively. But anyway, this works great, especially if I got the bed full of my bike and a bunch of other stuff, and then the back hitch is occupied by the camper. Um, so basically, this is a great little setup for, you know, just throwing my wife's bike on there. I actually kept this after I did the winch bumper so that I'd be able to do this. The downside to this is you don't get very good cooling unless you're on the highway. If you're going at slower speeds, like up through the mountains or a canyon or something, uphill slow, you know, it's an issue. I overcame that with an extra fan, but that's beside the point. The point is, is a great little system. I like it. Belongs to Mrs. Brian's mobile home. There you have it. We're loaded. Take the ramp, throw it into here. Get it centered. Like then I've got a safety chain that goes up around here, and there's a pin to hold that in. It's kind of overkill. But it's better to be overkill. See what you think. This is what the carrier looks like put on the back of the truck. And it's not any wider than the truck is. Of course, I got a wide truck, wide fenders. It would be a little bit wider than most pickups, I think. But the nice thing is, is when you look at the level 
of my tailgate that's going to be a few inches higher than the bumper and it's pretty high off the ground I mean that's a long way down so this is a lot easier to load onto than in the back of the truck if it's just going to be just me plus you have less air drag I think by having it on the back so you're down low and that way you're not sticking up you can fit in the low clearance things like a drive through or whatever so I think it's pretty decent. It's really solid now that I hard faced it. I hard faced, which means just welding a bunch of goober stuff onto the part that goes into the receiver. Basically the draw bar part of it that goes in there. I just made a bunch of X's and lines on it to make it fill up the gap so it's not so rattly. Because that was the thing, because anytime you have a twist point that's in the center, you know, it can twist a lot out here. So I wanted it to dampen that by filling in the gap with some weld. So to wrap things up I would just say that riding can be a lot a lot of fun. It can be a great bonding opportunity uh, but it can also be pretty dangerous and I guess loading the dirt bike is of the same nature. Um, it doesn't have to be that hard and it doesn't have to be that dangerous. Hopefully I've shared uh, with you some good tips. Um, if you were featured in any of these clips you know I just have to say thank you thank you uh, for putting those on the internet so that people can learn from that. That's just fantastic. Um, this video was a lot of work. I got brand new software. I paid $300 for Director Suite uh, by Cyberlink. It's version 2. And it crashed probably 20 times during the course of editing this video. It was absolute Hades for me. I hate when I have to deal with that. Um, so if you would, just please uh, click the thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe.